Time for an episode of Smitty Approved or Disapproved, where I bring in all your questions and and I break them down. I'm going to grab questions from Instagram, from Twitter, from from live streams, from DMs especially. These questions are going to be relevant. They're going to be the most asked questions I get. But why not go down the road of taking a player like Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson instead of Dalvin Cook? So kick back and get ready. The Fantasy Football Show begins now. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty. Outside of Derrick Henry and Barkley and Cam Akers and and the usual suspects that I I said to avoid last year, I'm going to give you a new avoid for 2022, and a lot of people aren't going to be happy about it. In 2022, I will be avoiding Dalvin Cook, no matter where his ADP might fluctuate in round one. He's a total avoid. You cuff him to Madison, everything's going to be okay. While it's very smart to cuff Madison to Cook, in fact, it's not smart, it's vital. It is ridiculous, irresponsible, reckless, and and self-sabotage. If you don't cuff the two together and you go down the road, that is Dalvin Cook 2022. But I say this, why not go with a player you believe in? Maybe you don't believe this, Bob, and that's okay, but I do. And I know a lot of you do too. You just need a nudge. But why not go down the road of taking a player like Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson instead of Dalvin Cook and get Alexander Madison anyway, who will be near free in the 8th or ninth or 10th or whatever round he ends up going in. Best of both worlds. Dalvin Cook has way too many red flags, if you will. And you know my deal. If you've got one red flag, it's okay. If you have multiple red flags, I'm staying clear. And it's not that you can't overcome the concerns I have. It is an odds game. People need to understand that when I maybe stay away from somebody and they do good, I don't feel bad about myself and think, how did I miss on this? Avoids are an odds game. If you identify correctly 10 avoids, let's say, between Derrick Henry, Akers, Barkley, and now Dalvin Cook, a lot of my top avoids for 2022, and I'll have a video on each one of them, don't worry. Could one of them have a great year in 2022? Not even a good year, a great year. Absolutely. When you can avoid big risk in a logical way, and eight times out of 10, those were all really good avoids, but was I too gun shy on Joe Mixon? Yeah, I was, and that is a miss. But do I regret it? No, because I still drafted players I liked as much that did as well as Joe Mixon, where Joe Mixon was getting taken. People need to understand you're not missing and and losing all those points when you avoid a player and they defy the odds that you've stacked against them. You're still drafting a player you like an awful lot right in place of that player. And even if you're wrong, it doesn't mean you're going to be wrong because you might have the same amount of points because you bought a guy you believed in a little more. It's an odds game. Jamar Chase over Dalvin Cook every time. Justin Jefferson over Dalvin Cook every single time. I get the scarcity of the running back argument. I get it. I understand it. And I know nobody's going to let it go. If you're running back, running back person or a running back wide receiver, you will never draft a wide receiver in round one. If that is you, I get it. I'm not going to change your mind, but it is not wise to draft a position. It is wise to draft a player. This goes back to best player available. The only approach I live and die by and no, this doesn't eliminate going running back, running back, or running back in round one. It will always remain one of the options. Going running back, running back, going running back, running back, running back will always remain one of the options, one of the children of best player available approach. It's just not locked in. If the road is open to running back, running back, then it's open to running back, running back. Best player available isn't for everybody. It isn't for the person that's going to have anxiety when they have to try and fill a void. Even though they have the best possible scoring options at every other position, but they're void. They still freak out. They'd rather have running backs they don't even like that they now have to cheer for and mediocre receivers that they can't hang and hate their team, but be like, oh, I drafted a spreadsheet team according to the numbers. It should be there at the end of the year. I don't play that way. Neither should you. I'm here to help you fill a void. If you go wide receiver running back and you're scared at running back, but you're loaded everywhere else, the show is designed to help you fill that void. My content is here for you to help you have a team at the end of the year. People say, wow. 
how did he get that team? You can't draft that team over again because you have an Eli Mitchell starting for you. My number one waiver wire ad for all of 2021 and a guy that you should have drafted anyway because he was a big breakout sleeper that I said draft Sermon and Mitchell together every single time you draft Sermon because if Sermon didn't work out who I was high on and I love when people say you busted on Sermon Smitty. Go watch the replay almost every time I mention drafting Sermon I say draft Mitchell and Sermon together. Together, they will win leagues, and that's what happened. Mitchell won leagues for people. People that went wide receiver, wide receiver, or wide receiver running back, or some sort of approach that left them with a void at running back two, Mitchell won you a league. And if you didn't draft Mitchell, like I said, I do waiver wire stuff different than anybody. I don't give you a, a dollar amount that you're going to bid on them because your league's different than my league. Bob's league's different than Bud's league. And I could blow smoke up your rear end and say bid 65% of your bid dollars on Mitchell and it's going to require 100% because your league are a bunch of ballers that drop the hundy on every player every time or they're a bunch of conservative guys from the ninth floor that at most spend 20% of their budget whenever a guy's available. Therefore telling you to bid something like 60 or 70% of your waiver wire budget would be a waste. I don't know those details i don't want to know them which is why my waiver advice is different than anybody else's i give you a confidence level a confidence level that this player is the best pickup of the year and what did i say mitchell i had a confidence level that he was an eight or a nine out of ten in my opinion at the time of week one of being the best waiver wire grab of the entire year i will always give you a rating a scale of one to ten on the likelihood being the best pickup of the year to give you an idea of whether you should invest the amount of dollars it will take in your specific situation on a guy that can maybe win you a league do you put it all on the line for him only you're going to know what it's going to take the question is for me to answer is he worth the big reach the big swing dropping the big low drop is he worth it that's my job your job is to know what the right amount would be my job is to nudge you in the direction of the player that is worth all of the low droppage Dalvin Cook has a shoulder problem. Dalvin Cook is injury prone. And I know you're going to say, Smitty, you can't predict injury, Smitty. Plus, he's going to have off-season surgery on that torn labrum, Smitty. Time for the labrum and ball and socket props. I know you guys love this example, but here's the ball and socket. It's a tight fit, but enough to slide out, right? That's the way the ball and socket work. What keeps the ball in the socket is a little bit of a labrum that, that, that seals it around and almost creates like a lip over the ball and keeps it tight and unable to come out. It's like a seal. And if we take this piece of paper, I can even better illustrate how the labrum holds the ball and socket into the joint. When you tear the labrum, in the case of Dalvin Cook, the ball comes out of the socket. Problem is, if that labrum doesn't get repaired or can't be repaired, it will continue to slide in and out. Now, Dalvin Cook has had more than one tear. This is not a case where it came out once, they put it back in, maybe they could even repair some of it, and he's got a nice tight fit again. And he's not getting hit over and over and over. A lot of civilians that have this surgery, they're not gonna probably run into the impact or the situation that caused it to come out, so they put it back in, it heals, rehab, you don't ever have the issue again. Dalvin Cook's continuing to take a beating on the shoulder. It has popped out multiple times, which means there's probably multiple tears in different places. Now, I can't confirm it, you can't confirm it, no one can confirm how bad the tears are, how many there really are, we're not going to get fed that information, but given this injury's happened multiple times, it is safe to assume negative things like he's got a pretty messed up labrum and it's not going to it's not going to get fixed because it keeps coming out. You can only do so much repairing to it. Dalvin Cook alone is a monster injury risk for 2022 because his labrum looks a little something like that not really but kind of and people need to be worried about the ball and socket popping out for the remainder of his career now you might say that's a stretch smitty you're really drawing conclusions okay how about the rest of the injury concerns you're not worried about leg ankle knee this guy's a walking injury a complete worry every time he touches the football if you've owned dalvin cook in any of the last two years you know what i'm saying down deep you know every carry he gets you hold your breath he literally is carried off or crawls off the field 
two or three times a season. I can't tell you how many times in the last two and a half years I've said out loud watching the game, he's done for the year. The injury concerns go deeper than the shoulder. He feels almost like a lock to miss games, multiple games. And he's also had a ton of mileage. A dip in talent is coming the next one, two or three years, mixing the injury concerns. And I'm not gonna be wanting to hold the bag any of the next couple of years. Not when you're talking about a Jamar Chase or a Justin Jefferson or an elite wide receiver that could be the number one wide receiver in fantasy football, even Cooper Cup. Give me that guaranteed wide receiver, a lot less likely to get hurt. Everybody he has a risk of getting hurt, but these guys have a lot less risk of getting hurt at the wide receiver position, not taking the beating that a running back's taking, and they don't have the injury risk that Dalvin Cook has. That's red flag one, two, and three. Another flag all on its own. His off the field issues are not gone. They're dormant. We don't know what's going on with them, but things could get worse with one released video clip or audio clip or witness. This situation kind of went away, but with the Alvin Kamara situation popping up, who knows what's going to ignite another Dalvin Cook scenario or a witness in that situation. And I'm not saying he's guilty or innocent. We don't really know the whole story, but I think it's safe to say there's probably blame on both sides and, and bad things could emerge. And there was a real threat that he'd be done for the year when this first came out. People need to remember this was not some small time situation being described and Dalvin Cook was, oh yeah, he'll be fine. It was a big worry that never really got addressed and he kind of felt like he got lucky. It didn't get talked about and he was able to continue to play and no one brought it up. It's still hovering over. If that was the only thing hovering over him, that would be one red flag and I wouldn't be that worried. I'm not that worried when there's one identifiable red flag for a player. I kind of give it a pass or at least give it a risk worth taking. Maybe Maybe in a couple leagues, this is one extra thing on top of the injury risk, on top of the mileage, on top of the fact that it, it boils down to this. Again, if it was just Dalvin Cook versus another risky running back, that's a whole different argument. The problem is always going to be for me, that you have one or two or maybe all three of the best wide receivers in football, top five capable guys overall available every single time Dalvin Cook's on the clock. So you can tell me he'll stay healthy or you're stretching here or you're you're really reaching here on the on the off the field stuff, Smitty. It doesn't matter what you throw at me because what I will throw back at you, you cannot combat. And that's Jamar Chase, Cooper Cup. Justin Jefferson, they are safer options no matter what you tell me. And I'm drafting the best player available, BPA, every time. Dalvin Cook, you are Smitty disapproved for 2022 and beyond. Trade him for a wide receiver like that in Dynasty. This one's more of a, a comment, I guess, than, than a question. The Extender is the worst nickname I've ever heard. I assume he's referring to... Is able to scramble and extend plays. We call him the extender. Trey Lance's, you want a nickname. What about the extender? That is an amazing nickname. That is a nickname for the ages. I love it. The extender. Put the extender in the game. He'll extend. Andre, all I can tell you is that sometimes I'm ahead of my time. Sometimes nicknames take a while to catch on. I approve the extender nickname. Slug wants to know what wide receiver is the next Cooper Cup. I don't know that there is a, a next Cooper Cup, like a guy going from outside of round two to the number one triple crown machine. But but the biggest, I think, over deliver based on ADP, Terry McLaurin. I'm going to have a lot of content on Terry McLaurin in the coming weeks and months. And people don't realize how good he is anymore. Very, very fickle are people and sometimes people are not too understanding his quarterback situation is holding him back this is a, an antonio brown meets tyreek hill type of little guy and the sky's the limit i'm gonna go ahead and say terry mclaurin is the most undervalued wide receiver one in fantasy football because he's not even a wide receiver one to to most everybody but in the range where you kind of got cooper cup last year mclaurin's sitting right around that value and maybe he doesn't climb to number one but he could be a top five to ten wide receiver in 2022 and beyond dynasty owners go get the man terry mclaurin you are smitty approved pal here's a voicemail from ryan wade what's up smitty what's up ryan my question has to do with the los angeles rams backfield for next year as uh, we all know cam Akers was out with that uh 
that uh, injury that took him out for the majority of the season. But the second that he was actually implemented back, um, he was their guy. Ryan, talk a little quicker. Uh, meanwhile, we have Daryl Henderson, who's been great all season. I mean, the dude definitely has talent. Um, you know, basically in the backfield with Sony. They all did a pretty good job as a running back, but Cam Akers, the way I see it, he's still the guy for LA Rams. Um, where do you see he gets, uh, you know, are you drafting him in the second round? Or are you trying to, you know, reach for the guy? Or are we kind of just fading him for next year? What's, what's the temperature on this guy? Great question, Ryan. Great question. Now, Cam Akers, you're either going to love him or you're going to hate him. I'm going to have a lot of content on Cam. I'm going to give you a quick, fast response on this one. I'm staying away because his ADP looks too high. His ADP doesn't account for him rushing back. His ADP doesn't account for his injury history. His ADP doesn't account for that he didn't rush for good yards per carry in the playoffs here. He did get used. Even though he could be an outlier because running backs don't produce good numbers after Achilles tears, we have no examples of it. None. None. Not ACL we're talking about Achilles completely different than Adrian Peterson if you say Adrian Peterson you don't know what you're talking about Achilles is different Achilles is awful and it takes about nine months to a year to come back from this guy tried to do it in five he's reckless with his body clearly by trying to come back after five months I don't care how good you feel your body can't be 100% so he's running the risk every time he goes out there if he escapes the Super Bowl which hasn't happened yet as of the moment of this recording maybe he walks into 2022 unaffected by the potential risk he's putting himself through right now but he's still very injury prone and to me and you can call this a gut instinct and you can say to yourself hey smitty that's stupid to use your gut only what evidence do you have do you have any evidence at all smitty evidence that he'll disappoint no but tell me the honest truth does he feel more mike thomas than he does cooper cup breakout wow you know, we, we should have saw this coming. Does he feel more Mike Thomas or does he feel more like that surprise Cooper Cup? My guess is you're gonna say Mike Thomas because the talent's there for Mike Thomas. We knew the talent was there. We still trusted him and we still kind of in hindsight knew we shouldn't have. I feel like Cam's a little bit like that given his injury history, given his decision-making to rush back from this and, and given that we've never ever seen him before. Not that it won't happen, it eventually will. This could be the case where this guy comes back and becomes a top 10 running back after an Achilles tear. I just don't feel like it's gonna be the case. I could be wrong. I'm willing to take that chance because it doesn't feel right to me. Cam Akers, your Smitty Dis approved there you have it the new revamp smitty approved uh segment i think we might do on fridays now moving forward appreciate every one of you we're gonna be doing best ball drafts all off season make sure you are signed in and ready by going to either smitty1.com and clicking on the underdog banner or using promo code smitty if you venture there on your own link is also in the description make sure you're signed up ahead of time on underdog fantasy with a minimum deposit it's like 10 or 15 bucks get signed in and ready so you don't miss a spot when i drop the private link in the chat and people are grabbing it left and right we're gonna do best ball drafts all off season let's go appreciate every one of you tell your mom tell your grandma tell everybody about the show we're coming for everybody in 2022 we are taking over now get out of here. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty.